TGIF, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Iron <coughs> Realm Media's Have No Sphere. We have such a huge show already planned, and then within the last about 10 minutes, I'd say, it like doubled. So hang on to your hats. It's going to be a crazy, crazy ride. We're going to have updates from Roxanne and Robin. They're going to bring Dr. John D on. We've got Dave Marsh, Nora's in the house. We're going to have Corey Sheet on. All sorts of stuff. <laughs> I'm excited. It's going to be fun. I'm not quite sure how this is going to turn out, ladies and gentlemen, so hold on to your hats and let's just see what shakes out. I just jump right in and say hello to everybody. Let's get on. Let's start with Walter today. <laughs> Walter, so how you doing? Again, how was your day? That's my, my brain kicking the ball through air that's not as well, You are as muted. Ball. I do not hear you. My thought process going I do hear Roxanne, so I'm just going to go ahead and mute Roxanne. Well, now I understand why I haven't heard myself through this whole conversation. Yeah, I've been talking mean. since I popped in the show, and I just thought you guys were so busy, you were ignoring me, and there was too much <laughs> pre-production going on, too many guests popping in. I was like, well, they'll talk to me at one point. I had another button still to hit. Ah, oh, welcome, welcome. Hello, everybody. It's Friday. We made it. TGI flat let's just move on we have way too much to hear me rabble on about stuff yeah we do have a lot all right how about one mr zachary zabala zach i know has been busy working on the truck zach how has your day been oh it's been good um got a lot done um gardens coming along another tomato plant popped today and is sticking out and yeah, I love, I think it's a pepper plant that I see, but I'm not 100% sure, so I'll let it get a little bit bigger. You know how it is if people out there that plant seeds. Sometimes at the very beginning, you don't know if it's what you planted, if that's the first time you've ever planted it. And I don't know what baby broccoli looks like yet, so we're going to find out. <laughs> yeah, broccoli is a fun one. I planted spaghetti squash, and it came out zucchini. I don't know what <laughs> We are also joined by one Mr. John Savage. I'll get John out of the way because I know John's not feeling too well, so we'll just get as many words out of him while we can. John, how are you doing today? <laughs> Thanks, Joe. No, I'm, I'm feeling okay. I just had a really busy week and all things coming in all directions and, and getting ill as well. And officially, I shouldn't be here because I wasn't here on Wednesday. So I'm just going to skulk into the background and, and be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> Sweet. What was that? Uh, what was that movie? Uh, the black and white clerks. I'm not even supposed to be here today. <laughs> <laughs> then I and we're also that. joined by the Adam Meekin. Adam, I know you've been a busy little boy at least for the last half hour or hour or so. How's your whole day been? It's the same, actually, Josh. <laughs> <laughs> um, good evening, everyone. Um, yeah. A crazy, crazy week. Um, some bits of fun, but maybe for another show, we'll discuss this. Um, and in another race, honestly, awful, awful um, on a personal level, you know, but hey, maybe not. Um, other than that, yeah, madness, mate. I like my notes. You know, I like a set of notes. Got a, I've got a little book. I update the book throughout the week so I know what's going off. And then the book's gone. It's gone out the window. Well, roughly, it's gone out the window. But basically, there's a party at Roxanne's house. And she's invited everyone. So, game on. Game on. 
Well, let's just jump in since I think we're probably going to be a, a little crowded, a little, we're going to have all sorts of people want things to say. So I'm going to jump right in and say hi to Jason, because I know Jason, who is also not feeling up to his 100%. So we'll just jump in and say hi to Jason of the family Disbury. Jason, thank you so much for joining us. Hi, guys. All right. Yes, uh, the weather's kind of uh, my uh, health away for a little bit. I'm um, very much feeling it a little bit at the moment. And the snow's come out to play with me as well. It's brilliant. <laughs> Well, perfect. Just just what you want to see when you're not feeling well. No, that's right. <laughs> well, we are also joined this evening by one Mr. Robin Campbell. Robin, thank you again for joining us. We look forward to all your recent updates. You're welcome, Josh. Great to be here. And hi, everyone on the panel. Nice nice to see you again. Hi, right, so hey, Robin. Gonna... Hey, Adam. <laughs> Check in with Roxanne and see how Roxanne's doing there. Sounds like she's got like the party going on. Roxanne, can you hear us? <laughs> I sure can. I'm so sorry. Just give me no. two seconds and I'll be with you, my darlings. Two you seconds. take your time. You take your time. Yeah, she's uh, she's got a house full. Um, there's the, the, the meetup tomorrow. So um, I believe that we've got Nora and... Um, um, David Marsh has come down to see her at the moment. So, yeah, she probably is having a party. <laughs> oh, to be a fly on that wall. <laughs> or sitting in the chair next to them all. What a blast. Yeah. That would be so much fun. Well, on, on, on a sad note, just to get this out of the way, way really quick, uh, the cat in which I invested all of that money and time in getting his orthopedic surgery and his pin inserted into his leg, just six weeks ago, um, he passed on Wednesday. Mm, so I tell you that. Yeah, it was pretty tough. I've had him about 14 years. Aww. I knew he was getting older, and we knew it was kind of a gamble investing all that money in orthopedic surgery in a geriatric cat. Mm. We figured we had a little bit more time. Uh, it was basically the exact day he was supposed to sort of get out of isolation and be allowed back in amongst the rest of the family and the rest of the house and we went to go check on him to bring him in on our bed and just socialize with him a little bit he likes to he likes to partake in the cannabis and it helps with the soreness in his legs anyway so <laughs> on Tuesday night he was thoroughly imbibed and was feeling no pain and when we went back to get him again on Wednesday night he was no longer breathing so oh. rest in peace exactly he is my not faced shithead. He had something going on with his his sharp little fangs, his little canine tooth. And there's a nerve that runs up through the nasal passages. And he would sneeze about 30 times in a row and just blow snot and boogers everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a good party trick. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good party trick. So I guess there is silver linings. <laughs> silver linings I'll, I'll say one him. thing, mate. Can we, can, I, I stuck him in the thumbnail. So can we have a can we have a name? Because we, you know. Well, officially, when I got him, his name was Rory, R O R Y, and that's the name that I kept. Uh, I I tend to give him extended names. Uh, Lorley Lou, I added a couple L's in there. Um, Rorio because he's a black and white tuxedo cat. Rorio Kitty, kind of like an Oreo cookie. Um, then there's Snot Faced Shithead, which is what he went by most often. So. Well, I'll tell you what then, mate, if that's the case, I've got a glass in hand and I'm raising it to not face shit. <laughs> Mine's empty, I'll need more coffee. But God bless to him. To I'll not face shit. Head. To not face the shit. Hey, you said something daft earlier as well, right? I, uh, uh, <laughs> gambling money on it. There's only one gamble there and that's on your soul if you don't invest in something like that. You, it, the futility was obvious, but... yeah. That, mate, that's that's the mark of a man. I bought. <laughs> well, I, I certainly couldn't see us putting him down just because he broke his leg. He's not a damn racehorse. He's a cat for crying out loud. So it was just credit. I mean, we make a conscious effort to not take on credit so that when we have money, that's what we're worth. 
we don't have to worry about owing other people money so we can actually have things to our name it's pretty nice but just to get that cat's leg fixed we did have to go ahead and open up a line of credit because it was like two thousand dollars basically emergency surgery that had to come out of nowhere so and again the good news with that was that i did most of my mourning on his death when he broke his leg because again two thousand dollars out of nowhere wasn't going to happen so what was going to happen was we were going to have to put him down because we couldn't afford it but but through the grace of god and fractional reserve banking uh my girlfriend got the line of care credit that she needed to pay for the legs six weeks later <laughs> magic then by the use of magic hear, by making money out of nothing uh, mate says it all pal um, the one thing I would say is uh, there's a there's something that's ascribed to it it wasn't worth the money and that's judging it by their rules judging our morals by their rules um letting our actions be led by their rules and whilst there was punitive damages for an American phrase um, with regards to yourself took the moral high ground mate and um, respect bro respect um, hey, bucket it's only Federal Reserve notes right well yeah technically <laughs> still have to get up in the morning for the fuckers no excuse my friend <laughs> Don't I, though? Yeah. Although I was reminded of that phrase in the past couple of days that I always heard, but again, after having heard it now, sort of with the mindset that I've got, the whole idea of working to live and not living to work really has hit home. So, uh, yeah, I, I suppose I do have to go in to earn my life credits. I sure wouldn't want to die of starvation alone in the woods like every other species has to do. Got to earn my way, make a living, literally. I, I had make... a midlife crisis moment with that tonight, talking with Marie. Yeah, you're done. You're going to walk away. You're going to pull a Zach on us. I said that's <laughs> one of the hardest things. You see someone as brave as Zach um, to do it all. And there's inspiration there. And for me, oh, I'd, I'd chuck it all in. Um, Quite happily, <laughs> if I'm being honest. My my the thing that holds me back is not necessarily fear. Um it's it's I suppose commitment to other people. Yep. I know exactly what that's all about. I've got a lot of them. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. You put myself through misery and hardship and Love it. It's another thing to make someone else endure it along with me. So I guess here I am earning my life credits. All right. Well, I think Roxanne may be about ready. I see drinks are poured or pouring. Mm -hmm. Lemonade. Yeah, this is Ribena. Actually, Ribena is not alcoholic. <laughs> <laughs> Hello guys, how are you? Very well. How are you, Roxanne? I'm good. I'm good. Okay? I, I, I'm not having a word that that's not alcoholic from the lady that has her drinks made by Marks and Spencers for her. <laughs> <laughs> so sorry for the late arrival. We were just dealing with something real quick, um, but it's all sorted now. So we're, we're technical difficulties, bro. But I've, I've got a bit of a drama with my laptop and it's running out of battery. And a few other bits and pieces, but we're all good. Nora will be with us imminently um, just in the West Wing, powdering oh, her nose and her blush on. Oh, yeah. They've got something to show you, Adam. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Sorry, right. boys. He's getting his full moon out. Cool. Oh, good man. That's sexy. <laughs> that is one sexy piece of apparel. Nice. I tell you what, Dave. They're proper. They're proper limited edition things, mate. They are. How many do we have made? Gosh. Yeah. All the pretty bad on that end. 
<laughs> yeah, Vox, what's with your mic? Right, I'll sort it. Sorry, I'll go and plug it in. Uh, I'll plug it. We're <laughs> <laughs> not plug away from perfection. I'm not an audio engineer, Roxanne, but next time, start there. Yeah. <laughs> Watch it all go tits up now. Yeah, Dave, I reckon, you know what, mate, if you keep hold of that T-shirt for maybe another five to ten years, it could be pretty much close worth its actual current retail value if you were yeah. to put it on eBay. So, no, but, mate, uh, Josh, how many yeah. did we have made? Was it 10? Was, there weren't many of that. There weren't many. There's I only a few me. folks with them. Well, I do feel honored to own mine then. <laughs> For sure. I didn't know they were so limited. You've got them. Oh, I've got, I've got, yeah, I'm have. in the club. I had mine, like I pulled the hanger off the the rack and i'm like eh, no nah, i just had that on a couple of days ago and i didn't wear it so we would have been twins had i worn mine <laughs> i I'm usually probably, try. I, I have one as well um, got one in the drawer for savage josh has got a couple not really roxanne right. no, i've got one and i sent my other along can you hear can you hear no, it's no. getting better that's bad that's because you're nearer yeah, I think it's because you're right up on it. One, two, one, two. Hmm. Nope, you're, nope. You're not coming through that mic. You need to um, you need to bring up the menu on the bottom left by your mic. Where it says mute. Yeah, you'll see the mic itself as a choice at the top. Select a microphone. How's that? It's crap. <laughs> it is crap. <laughs> it could be uh, the, the USB port. Maybe drop out and come back in. That's the yeah, best thing we I do. think that's what we did last week yeah. with uh, yeah. with this kind of issue. Yeah, you might want to try that. As long as you've got the microphone selected, then go ahead and drop out and click the link again and hop back in. And hopefully that would reinitialize your audio under the right microphone. And I sure hope that's Nora coming up behind you, by the way. <laughs> Uh, see, this we is it. are awake. <laughs> we are aware. Uh, you see, the, the you think you can relax now because that's the one click, right? But that's not a, any of the realm that have missed hit that click yet. So it's still to come. Still to still come. To... <laughs> Thanks for putting that over our head, Adam. <laughs> are you kidding? It's Friday. I woke up with that over my head. I missed you guys this morning. It was a crazy day. And literally, it was half past ten before I knew it, and then it was midday. And so I didn't even, you know, I didn't even get in chat. So, what happened? Oh, oh, a little, little this, a little of that. Um, apparently, yeah, they can weigh gravity with an RC car now. Uh, what else? What else? That's right. The Curiosity rover is now weighing mountains on Mars, which is cool. It took them years to figure out how to to figure out how to you know detect gravity in any way, shape, or form from an underground tube in Louisiana. But they finally figured out how to do it with an RC car on Mars. So shit, we got this. <laughs> but you know what, then, guys, right? I know it's not my tax dollars, but if they can do that, and it worth fifty two million a day, surely. Uh, well, you would think. Close your eyes and click your heels. Definitely worth it. Well, you think there'd be some sort of application that would be usable down here. You wouldn't need to spend $52 million a day to send an RC car to effing Mars to weigh mountains. If you're going to weigh mountains with an RC car, why not save your cash and do it down here? I've got hmm. a great new way. Right? Elon Musk's new project, right? For $100,000, and get on the payload... Send your remote control car to Mars, Iceland, right? And then you can control it via an app on your phone. Well, that's it's something. Be better than the flights in space because they'll never happen, but at least you could have the illusion. You're a little quiet, Roxanne. I, I'm not sure which microphone it is yet. It's, it's on, ah, there we go. I think that's the right microphone. It just seems really low, but I don't think there's any control for that. 
Right, hold on. Let me just mess with it for a second. Can you hear me? A bit better now. There you go. Hear me yeah. now. Can you hear us now? A little bit, just because you're right up on that mic. You're still using the camera microphone now. Hello? No. I think, I think that's the camera mic that you're using. Re remember, Roxanne, you, you have to pull it out halfway. Sorry, can you hear me? <laughs> 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 can you hear me? Can anyone hear me? Can you hear me at all? It's not good. Aww. Okay, I might have to try without a mic. Can you hear us at all now? Yeah, we can hear you a little bit. I think it's better than nothing. Okay, push out like this, okay, basically. So now you can hear us. Like, can you hear us good now? I think so. I think that'd be, it'll be fine. So we'll just shout at each other. We'll shout, yeah? We're okay. Yeah, we can shout. Yeah. Is there a chance you can minimize? Oh my God! He's talking about pulling out halfway. Oh my god! Sorry. Oh, sorry. Now you're all going to say pulling out halfway. I'm guessing there was a pop up. I'm guessing there was a pop up there. <laughs> We, I think the gang is all here, at least until Hori shows up, which could be at any time, really. On Skype. But before we. Yeah, Hori, Hori should be here in maybe half hour or so, give or take. Cheers, everyone. We're gay crashing. Cheers. Cheers, Josh. Cheers, Walt. Cheers, Adam. Cheers, Jason. Cheers, cheers, cheers Roxanne. I'll have some coffee with you. <laughs> cheers, cheers, guys. Is is Nora on the Kia Royales there? Are we on champagne and? <laughs> it's like nice. It's fruity. Well, put them on champagne. Should we say? Yeah. Shots. Yeah. Chardonnay. Right. And the Chardonnay and the Echo Falls. <laughs> 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 well, sweet. Well, tell everybody what's been happening with you guys. What's going on? With the Globally UK tour, what's happening? What, what's the latest? What's what's the haps? What's the scuttlebutt? Jason, are you breaking? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm. Um, I've. Uh, sorry. The Globally tour is. Um, it's it's starting to take shape. It's uh, it's all coming together. Um, start to speak to um, a few of the participants. Um, I. I I'm in two minds whether to drop names yet, but uh, and I feel like I, I can't yet because I haven't got a hundred percent definites off a few um, key people. But it's um, it's starting to take shape in a way that I wasn't expecting. So many well-known names that will be joining the tour. Um, so uh, it's 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 becoming really exciting now, and uh, I, I really can't wait to um, you know to get this started. Um, have you got a vehicle yet, Jason? Yeah, we have a vehicle in mind. Um, I haven't put the deposit down yet on it. Um, so um, I'll be... And that is only the reason because um, we're in two minds whether to buy one ourselves or to put a deposit down and hire it. Um, I thought if I buy it myself, adding 14,000 miles to it in, you know, like right at the beginning, it would probably upset me a little bit. <laughs> so... I figured that it's probably best to just hire one for un with unlimited mileage and uh, adding 14,000 miles, I'd, I'd rather that upset somebody else. Either that or buy it and then sell it as the Globe Light Tour camper van. <laughs> That's beautiful. As a going thing. <laughs> signatures, have everybody sign yeah. a little message on the side. Uh, uh, right, yeah, I'll, um, I'll try and, um, yeah, I'll... Um, I'll make some space for that, you know, like I'll put a big uh, white sticker to it on it and everyone to sign it. Savage is it the nail on the head there, mate. He has, because we talked about the... See, there's Dave looks sat in that T-shirt and we all know that's going to add value over time, right? But actually, imagine if that T-shirt had been in the camper van that went around. Actually, you know what, mate? I think that's a really sound proposition. 
Um, I reckon you sell lottery tickets yeah. to everyone all the way around and who and then lottery it at the end. 20 bucks a pop. There you go. 10 quid a ticket and you could win the uh, the, the camper van, the globe <laughs> light camper van for 10 <laughs> quid. <This> item. <laughs> exactly. You'd have people, it'd be like Willy Wonka's chocolate factory. You'd have people buying up lottery tickets all over the world. Yeah. You need to think <laughs> this through, mate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, you, the, the you don't want to invent it. shit on a whim like Savage does. Uh, you are... <laughs> no, no, you've got to plan. I'll tell you what, though, mate. That's a cracking, cracking shout. I'd have a couple of tickets. I love a raffle. Yeah. yeah. But uh, you've, given me, you've given me ideas as, as well, but rather, not, not necessarily with the van, but um, but with the banner that I'm, I'm getting a banner made up, for, um, the same as um, Harry had, you know, his big, he had a big, um, oh God, what was it, about 10 metres long or so. Um, and I, I wanted the same wording on there because I wanted that banner to go around the whole of Europe. It went, you know, it, it, Harry's banner went around the whole of the UK and that, and I would like it to carry on. Um, I might even ask Harry if I can have his bar, uh, banner um, i was about to ask where the original banner wound up it needs to be in the flat earth museum we're all going to make yeah right? well I, i'm just thinking I, we could add to it uh, i'm going to speak to harry and see if he'll if he'll let me have it um so harry if you're listening can i have it please <laughs> um because wouldn't that be great to uh pour all the signatures on that banner that would be brilliant if I if I oh. go around with a permanent marker pen and any um or any new um flat earther that turns up that they get to sign it you should That's give it brilliant. to Harry then. Yeah. We've got lots of things we could donate to a Flat Earth Museum, haven't we? Like, well, you've got your, your level. I've got my gyroscope. And Adam, I'm sure you could... I'd give me body, John. Yeah, a couple of glasses of wine or something. Crazy. <laughs> a few broken globes. Well, I'll give me body to pseudoscience. Yes. <laughs> I'll with it on that. <laughs> One day there will be a museum. In fact, there you, is. I, I tell you, a what, I, museum. John, it's in John, Newfoundland. Before we go off on that, right? You, you, you'd say it lightly, right? but you know what? Sometimes, what you're doing, Jason, shit hot epic. And there are lots of people out there, even though there are no flat earthers, by its effective people all, all over the place. Um, and I think what John says is actually, you don't have to profit it from yourself, but stick a GoFundMe out there to buy the fecking thing that will run tour this year next year and give people out there the opportunity to help um i certainly know if i wanted to help and some way i had to find jason and the family disbury track him down give him 20 quid or 100 quid or a grand or buy him a camper van i'd probably couldn't be asked but if there's a gofundme out there stick it out there with a disclaimer that if we don't make it it'll go towards the hiring and see what happens because there's a lot of people out there i'm realizing that aren't as i know i'm shy and retiring but aren't necessarily as outgoing and aren't like all those guys that want to jump on youtube but they are aware of this and they want to help and i don't think it's such a bad shout savage mm. Well, I was saying that the, apparently uh, there is a flat earth museum and it's in Newfoundland, apparently. We had it, didn't we, when they had the job up? Yeah, the curator, didn't we? We were advertising for the job. That's right, because they say they are the center of the flat earth or something. I don't know, but um, yeah, that's a <laughs> that was an interesting at the pyramid. Yeah, your audio is quite quiet, Adam. That's not is it just thing. me. That's not a bad thing. That'll do. <laughs> Seems like there's also a, a Flat Earth Museum on something called Fogo Island. Yeah, that's where it is. Oh, that is the one you're talking yeah, about. Fogo okay. Island. Yeah, that's the one. Tiny little place, isn't it? Yeah. Very close to where I used to live. Factoid. 
Pull it up, Walt. Stick it up. Jot okay. that down on your dossier, John. Thank you. Um, yep. Yeah. Add that to the, the yes, papers. Mate. Got it. Um, sorry, I just don't mean to chime in with something completely unrelated. Can you just check the message that I just sent you on Skype? Thanks. Mm. Grab your attention with that. Thank you. As you were, guys. As you were. <laughs> However, it's permanently closed. What? That's what it says. I didn't get a curator then. Time to sponsor that one. Go fund me, please. No doubt, man. <laughs> we'll we'll give them plenty of exhibits. <laughs> we we'll just need a different one. Somewhere that's not in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, let me drop this story about the fact that it's closed here. Hang on. Give it a little read if you can. Uh, surely. Hold on one second while I'm mid copy and send here oh that's not the chat i'm in where is that chat there it is hello to everybody in chat by the way i'm staying out of chat this week so i love y'all <laughs> john got hey, me trained hey Finally. constance it comes to everyone in the chat hey andres all right so fact and fiction collide at the flat earth museum on fogo island the museum of the flat earth isn't open on this quirky, resilient island that some have declared one of the four corners of the earth. But Kay Burns is willing to unlock the doors and show us around. The first clue that things aren't going to unfold as expected comes when she hands over a business card that defines her position as founder, artistic director, under the slogan, think outside the sphere. Oh, I like that one. It's pretty good. <laughs> we missed the darn it. <laughs> we did. Damn it. Anyway, uh, I had come to this modest building in Shoal Bay with a deliberate open mind, family in tow, warning everyone to be respectful, knowing only vaguely that flat earthers are free thinkers who believe the round earth is an elaborate hoax. Sometimes it's more fun not to do your research. Uh, let me see how long this actual article is. Oh, yeah, this is a really, really long article. So I don't think I'm going to read the whole thing to everybody. But it's an interesting, uh, at least they don't start poo-pooing right out the gate, like most of them. Well, why would you have a, I just don't understand. Why would you have a Flat Earth Museum? The Flat Earth, Society, Island? The Flat Earth Society of Canada believes Fogo Island, especially the rocky outcrop brimstone head that you can climb for a spectacular view of the North Atlantic Ocean, is one of the four corners of the earth. That's why it's there. But doesn't a corner sort of <laughs> suggest that you're surrounded by walls or something? As far as I remember, you can go north, south, east, and west from Newfoundland. So I don't understand. I, say, I think a corner would suggest at least an edge or a boundary of some sort. But if you're still there at the corner looking out, what's beyond oh there's the ocean just beyond my corner and then there's some more land just beyond that ocean does that really count as a corner or is it just an arbitrary spot on the I map think, i think they're taking the piss i think it's about time we started our own flat earth museum <laughs> we just need a gofundme to buy a big mud flood building <laughs> gotta be a mud flooder on it <laughs> Lots of white granite. And well, we are joined by someone new, Dr. John D. Can we hear you, John? Hello, hello. There you are. Welcome, welcome to IRM. Hello, hello. Hold on a second. It's saying my, uh, yeah, my connection is not stable. Mm. That's all right. That's par for the course. There's nothing wrong with not being stable. Fine. We can hear a wicked echo, though, if someone's got it playing on speakers. Hold on a second. It's saying my, uh, yeah, my connection is. All right, so what we're going to do is everybody who has a camera on, let's just kill the camera. And then whoever has a watch page open, if you can go ahead and read that or shut that would that'd be good. Who's in a submarine? 
Somebody's sonar is being pinged. <laughs> Oh, I think I figured out what it is because we have John D and Dr. John both in here. Okay, well, so one is muted and one is not. Someone definitely has YouTube open at the moment, and that definitely is causing issues. So, if whoever is watching YouTube right now while they're on the show could just kill the YouTube completely, that would help a lot. I don't think it's YouTube because it's the uh, echo is too soon, if you know what I mean. Understood. Yeah, I've only got this one app open and nothing else. Well, darn then. Uh, Josh called it. Yeah, I think Josh. John D. We've got rid of Dr. John. So, John got... D, can you hear us? We had Dr. Jekyll and Dr. Hyde. <laughs> We're looking, we're looking for John D alone. <laughs> Looks like he's trying. Yeah. Whilst John settles in, so we let Roxanne and Robin give us the update before it descended complete force and <laughs> Horry joins. And we completely go off onto strange things like the flat earth museum on fogo island <laughs> do, do you want me to kick off do Go some on. updates charge, on the Robin. conference yeah so so just uh, if you just allow me to do the the top down uh summary of what the convention's about it's it's september the 13th 14th and 15th it's held at the pioneer pioneer center in kidderminster which is a purpose-built conference facility that sleeps 320 and will house 500 during the day what's great about it is for one whole weekend food accommodation and also i think i'm going to have around 14 speakers it's, it's 195 quid all in per person uh, which is amazing but even if you're not keen on the accommodation because there is one limitation and that is it's clustered bedroom so it's four or six so we offer discounts for groups of two four and six and um further discounts if you want to pay direct um instead of using the event bike platform but people wanting to see the information on the conference can go to feconvention.com and a couple of weeks ago i went to see the venue for the evening which was the the george hotel in Budley, and we're going to get some mini buses organized to take us from the pioneer center down there but it's a huge pub it's a fantastic venue um really spacious inside but also massive beer garden which should be great fun and um as as people were sort of learning about this event you may not be aware yet but it's going to be the end of the Jason's UK leg for his pan-European Globalide tour. And all, that, all of that information is on globalide.co.uk. But when, when Jason rolls into Birmingham, um, we, we plan to get as many people attending that as possible because it's a great sort of send-off for the UK leg to then uh, go to the conference. Friday night will be uh, Jason and Roxanne's night to you know, to, to have a bit of a reflection on, on those two weeks, have a celebration, have a Q and a open mic session, and then we can all rock off to the pub. So, um, that's it in a nutshell. It's, it's a very, um, family friendly center. So it's opened up to children. There's half price tickets for, to get this right, um, four to 11 year olds and 75% price tickets for 11 to 16 and all children between zero and four go free. So, you know, on site there's foosball, table tennis, um, there's outside this basketball, there's even a five-a-side football court. So, you know, there's, there's plenty to do for kids there. It's a great place to chill out because it's in the countryside. Um, there's free parking, so getting there should be easy peasy. I, I followed my sat-nav, no problem. I've tested the Wi-Fi, I've tested the mobile signal there. The staff are brilliant. Um, they're, they're all there to help you, including an army of caterers in a huge canteen. So when people come with special um, dietary needs like vegan, vegetarian, 
um, or nut allergies and all those things they can accommodate. I've already had the menus for that and they're just absolutely fine. You know, we're not talking boutique hotel, but we are talking satisfying, nourishing, tasty food. So I'm really, really pleased to be and now, you know, just continually building up interest on this event because the first two speakers we've we've announced is Martin Leeker, who's obviously uh, taken off in his channel. I think he's up to 19,000 followers now, which is awesome. And um, just tonight we announced Paul on the plane. And we have some plenty more names to come. So really looking forward to that. And now I'm just looking into the smaller details so things like wristbands for those that are going to have a vegan meal or um to make sure we don't raid the raid the catering and everyone plunders all the vegan options <laughs> we don't want that um and just generally some of the some of the smaller details like the shuttle bus between the pioneer center and the george hotel in Budley. and you know if people don't want to book in on ha in house because you want a hotel there's nothing stopping them doing that just buy a day ticket for 55 pounds and then go off and book an airbnb a hotel there's top of the range hotels nearby or there's just simple airbnbs which are around 60 65 quid for a night so if you want um you know bit more privacy, a bit more discreet, bit of peace and quiet in the evenings, then that's absolutely fine. You know, go and book a hotel or an Airbnb, book a day ticket for the Saturday or the Saturday and the Sunday. Um, and, and you know, you can do it that way. And I think that's pretty much it. You know, we're building up to more content, more things going on in the evening. But the key thing was to get the venue booked, the speakers all locked in to, to commitments. And, um, it should be an, an amazing event. You know, lots of new people joined Flat Earth this year and last year. So there's all those people have yet to attend a conference. So I'm sure we'll reach those um, through the various communications that we've got through Facebook groups, Twitter, Instagram, <laughs> YouTube channels. You know, coming on here, is, thank you very much for the platform, guys. It's, it's appreciated. And, um, you know, we're, we're excited to to include everyone, families, couples, you know, everyone who, who wants to come as a group, it should be easy to do that. I'll tell you what, Robin, um, I just wanted to say this because I've always said that, I mean, I've, I've heard uh, like bitching and moaning about the organizers of previous conferences and this sort of thing. And people are in it for the money and you know, all the rest of it. Mm. And my stance on that has always been, you know, I don't care if the most staunch baller comes along and organizes a conference. Um, as long as they, they do a good job, you know, as long as people who turn up get value for money, they get everything they want. Yeah. It really doesn't matter who organized it as long as it's done well not only are you a, a flat earther this is what you do for a living isn't it so it's well, not i have done yeah i have done events yeah I've, i used to be a bar manager a head chef a restaurant manager i did hospitality management at college at leeds you at leeds poly so all of this event stuff is is no problem i've i've organized weddings i've cooked for about 300 is my maximum uh, so none of this phases me none of this sort of yeah, the point being, this isn't um, this isn't something you've just dreamt up in the pub and gone. Yeah, I think I can do it. It's like <laughs> yeah. it's something you've got yeah. a hell of a lot of experience with. So anyone going to this can expect a uh, a really top notch event and well organised. And by the sounds of it, the detail you're going into with the wristbands and and the food and and actually you know turning up at the event and testing the Wi-Fi and all that sort of thing. I mean, that's that's uh, meticulousness that. Um, I think people should appreciate. Oh, thank you. Well, I must give credit to Dee Dee and Gary because they've, they've already snagged all the teething problems in their first event. And, you know, we collaborate and it's, it's an absolute joy to collaborate with both the, the Globe Light team and also Gary and Dee Dee. And we're, we're very keen to keep a joined up approach, you know. We we share ideas, we brainstorm, we, we Skype and um, we're supporting one another because, you know, you know, as your good selves are supporting us, it's really important for us to get the support too. I think it is important. Mm. And, and like you say, it's on the shoulders of giants as well. So it's, um, you yeah, know, kudos to, to all you guys that are putting your, your bacon on the line here and, mm. um, and going for it. 
Well, it's a big meetup as far as I'm concerned, and I love meetups. <laughs> and and of course, I'll make sure the PA kit works and uh, the catering works out okay. But the, I must admit, the Pioneer Centre takes a lot of hassle off my hands. You know, they do this day in, day out. They have church groups of 400 and they have, you know, youth groups of 200 all the t- all the time. So they actually have a team on site that will be checking in with me and Charlotte regularly just to check, you know, your guests okay. So you can confirm that Iron Rail Media is not doing the audio or any of the PA system. <laughs> any of the tech. Do, you, do you know what? If you if you want to be involved, I'd be more than happy. But let's just talk another time. <laughs> uh, but, um, yeah, I have tested the PA kit, but they've got one PA kit for one, the main hall, which is 300 seats. And I probably do need a backup. So I've, it, it doesn't have to be amazing. I will find one. Adam, get your Robin, stick. no, I was going to say, Robin, no matter how cheap Savage's quote is, right, unless it's plumbing, hey, clear, mate. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to get feedback, are we? We're all going to, we're all going to be holding our ears. <laughs> I was going to say, probably one of the best selling points for it is that you do not have Iron Row Media in charge of the audio. So that was my cool. point, Josh. Thank you very much. Yes, and even if it is plumbing, stay well clear of us. <laughs> Maybe Real quick, I have uh, some people in, uh, somebody in chat dropped us a nice little super chat. Uh, Renee Calusia. Calusia? Calusia? Second super chat of, of the night. They I had- just saw a new one pop up as I said it. The first one was the demonic spinning ball deception must die with the mm-hmm. sunglass emoji. You gotta love it. And then the second one, Flat Earth Family is growing. Smiley face, heart, eyes all around our beautiful stationary flat earth. Be smarter than a globe tar. Thank you so much, Renee. We appreciate it. And shout out to everybody in chat. Again, I'm trying to not get involved and actually involved in the chat. I always lose track of the show when I do that, John says. So well, hello well, to everybody. Stop I'm messing with you, me. John. Let's I'm let's give a shout out to Dee Dee, who's in absolutely, the chat. Absolutely, yeah, Dee Dee. Hi, Dee Dee. Hey, it looks like Hori has already also joined us there in the chat as well. I saw you shout Hi. me out there, Hori. Hello, Hori. Hori. <laughs> So, so guys, um, I know you've got plenty of other guests on tonight. Well, Rob, Robin, before yeah. you move on, mate, there was, yeah. I was chatting with my wife tonight and, and you're describing the... And there's a difference, there's a marked difference, both with what Dee Dee's doing in Amsterdam um, and it is becoming more of a weekend event than a, a conference, per se, where there's limited times the conference is on, the, the way it's being organised. And you've you're doing the same sort of thing, and you're talking yeah. about the, and you can hear you're experiencing and organising these things where the way you've already pre-thought all these things through and even to the level of discount. Um, mm. But you you're creating something that, for me, is what's the right word? I don't want to sound like like an evangelical Christian event, bring a friend <laughs> along, but it's actually quite an open event where there's a a lot of stuff that where actually it is the sort of place where you could bring those who are still confused along hundred um, percent and you're creating an environment yeah. where no one's gonna be kicking off with people it sounds quite a a really great place to meet and the other thing i wanted to say yeah. mate, is the way you've taken account for families and i think that's really brilliant help thank you mate and um uh, the beauty of this venue is I've got a hall A and hall B. So, I, I, you know, Jason very kindly is going to do a, an activism workshop, but that's not for everyone. So alongside that one, I can run something different. And session one, day one, in, in hall B, will be a Flat Earth 101 for beginners. So if you've got a mate you want to introduce to Flat Earth, you take them there. You don't you don't get them confused by advanced stuff. You take them there, and and you know that from there they can actually go. All right, I think I know where my friend's coming from now, mm. because we'll do the top ten proofs or the top ten debunking things like Dave Murphy did in April. But um, we can cover some simple points for those who are just coming into it, and would rather have someone sit them down and actually show them the A to Z or flat flat Earth. So. I hope that appeals to those who want to bring a friend and, and they should feel very welcome. They won't be patronized in any way. It'll be a family feel to this event. 
And, um, you know, I just think if we open up our arms to everyone, they'll all hopefully take it in a soft way in which it's presented in the, in the first couple of hours. And then they can settle in knowing, right, I know what, I know what facts are buzzing around these guys' head now. I can at least identify with the things that, that got them when they first started, if that makes sense. Absolutely. So, yeah, I'm, I'm excited about it. It's, there's, there's something there for everyone. I can't wait to have the full schedule up for everyone to see, but we're doing a, a fortnightly reveal. That's DD. I know. I love the, I love this plan of just teasing it out. I love it. Yeah. yeah. So uh, Roxanne and I recorded a podcast the other day and yeah, there's another, there's another interesting guest is going to be announced soon. And I've booked, I've just booked someone else that no one knows. So, uh, well, maybe Roxanne, if you ply her with drinks, she she might tell you. But, um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I have booked somebody else who who nobody knows. So, I'm excited about that one too. <laughs> yeah, big time. My lips are sealed, and this half a bottle that I'm down already is not going to have any effect. Yeah. So, no you know, we we we're, we're doing fortnightly reveals and, and people can get to know who's coming we we know we know what the booking sort of um trends are most people book 3 4 months away from the event so by the time they actually hit the button they'll have a full probably have a full program announced but if you want to get in early and get your discounts and you know secure a place you should get you should get yourself over to feconvention.com and just get it done and it's a long night, Roxanne. <laughs> well, I've been on that. Just one, one from a business point of view. Yes. This isn't a, a no fool open a business like this. Um, but from a business point of view, you know, if people are saying that the discounts are there now, aren't they? Um, they're yeah. not there later. And, and actually, if people do commit early, from talking to Gary, it gives you, the organisers, the strength to commit to more to support 100%. more and maybe guys quick shout out look don't hold back you're gonna do this that you ain't getting no discount in june and july um the discounts now and support the cause and it gives strength to i'll oh, shut up Go on. well i I, ju- I just know there'll be a wave of people coming from all the meetups and all the all the hangouts and those people are gonna get to hear about this with seven to eight months run up there's going to be such a saturation of people who now know it. And hopefully all the objections that people have, you know, it's, it's a money-making venture. Uh, hello, it's 195 pounds each for all of that. Um, and you know, it, it ain't full of shills because we're, we're <laughs> there's only us here, you know, the team, the team of people that are regularly making content and putting effort in, it's those people that are going to be there. So you know, good luck finding a shill because there won't be one. It's just genuine people who have put done the miles, you know. Um, and then what other objection is left? How can you object to coming together with like-minded people to come away with the biggest buzz you've ever had? Because that, that's what will happen when you walk away from a conference and you, get, you, you make new friends. That's what's going to happen. You'll walk away with someone to go and pal up with and do, do experiments with or... You know, you'll you'll meet people who have a new idea that you'll 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 partner up with. So, so much to gain from it. I think it's a fantastic idea, and I wish you all the best of luck. Thank you. And I think definitely overlooked how many new people are coming to this on a daily basis, and it's not just an echo chamber because there's going to be plenty of people showing up to hear some of this information for the very first time. And I think it makes it a beautiful way to do it. Awesome. Well, Gary and Didi did it on, you know, zero build up, you know, as in nobody knew what a UK conference was going to be like. And they didn't know how many people were out there. Um, and they still managed to fill up that room, build the interests, you know, get people engaged with it. But this time, how, look at all the platforms that are now really fully on board with all of this so many more that can just spread the word it, it, it's it's got to increase by at least 50 percent it's probably not 
too far off that we'll be um, renting out Wembley or something along those lines. <laughs> I hope so. I hope so. <laughs> well, look at Iru well, I've never in seen... Spain. Sorry. Well, yeah. Well, you've got to think big and, you know, the this venue holds 500. So, you know, you help me get it out to 500 and I'll be absolutely over the moon. But, um, you know, realistically, let's go for three to 400. I'd be more than happy with that. Well, we um, can certainly help you with about 50, maybe. Yeah, awesome. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. What I was to say there is I do see it just starting to permeate the pop culture. I mean, early mm-hmm. on, John, uh, not John, sorry, Adam's kids sent us a video of some cartoon talking about Flat Earth. Just last night, I was watching some silly show selling little plastic Chotsky from uh, cartoons and whatnot. And in the middle of that, he went into a flat earth rant. So, I mean, it's starting to really permeate. It's getting out everywhere, isn't it? Oh, yeah, man. It's great to see. Real awesome. quick, real quick, we uh, we had a nice, lovely super chat there. Buying the next drink, uh, round of drinks. Ranty mm. flat earth. We appreciate it, my friend. Good, man. And then Renee again, letting us know about flat earth 101.com which has some activism tools so go check that out awesome. before we move on robin what's what's full capacity well the day capacity is 500 and 10 520 uh, so you could literally have 320 residents and 180 190 on top during the day on day tickets who were sleeping elsewhere Okay, so right. we, I like a we, random deal. I do you a deal, right? Right. We can get to Easter, and you've sold off the sellout. I'll provide. I'll hire. It's a good a ball pit for people uh, for adults to throw themselves <laughs> in and release themselves from the ball. <laughs> crushing event, ball crushing event. <laughs> throw yourself in, release yourself in the ball pit. I'll get one that of those. That is brilliant. It's What's brilliant. that? 260 tickets by Easter, and I'll pay for that. There's a deal. <laughs> yeah, happy days. Fantastic. Well, that's a deal. Adam, <laughs> Thank you. Adam, I thought you were going to supply toothpaste and T-shirts again. Yeah. I'm on that. <laughs> I'm on that's that. Dave, Dave, that's I set up a meeting this week now. with the director. So hopefully um, I've got a meeting with this guy soon um, through some business contacts. So I'm going to see what he says and point out the real benefits of having a, a European-wide tour is product promoted <laughs> to like-minded individuals they cruise around Europe. So I'm hoping for a chat in the next few weeks with you. Listen, right, guys, I'm going to yield the floor because you've got lots of other guests, and um, I'll, thanks, I'll just say thanks for the platform again, and uh, I'll hang out in the chat now. So thank you very much for your time. Thank you so much, Adam. Can I All just right. clarify a gentleman's handshake? Wait, let me get the camera on. What about it's got to be a side uh, a whack a mole, whack a ball. <laughs> I like that. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. We're on, Robin. I love it. Right, I'll, I'll shut up. <laughs> Cheers, Adam. Thanks, guys. I'll see you again soon. Hi, guys. Uh, can I just uh, Thanks, give a shout out for the meeting that's about to uh, take place tomorrow as well? Go ahead. Absolutely. It's um, it, it, it's a meeting hosted hosted by Lisa Sen, Sen, Seneri, uh, um, and she's doing that at um, in Glastonbury, um, St Edmunds Hall, uh, between six and ten pm. Um, that's on tomorrow, Glastonbury. Um, uh, it's in uh, St Edmunds Hall, is Chinnock Road, Windmill Hill, Glastonbury. Um, and there's also one other little quick shout out. Um, I got a message today by, um, I, oh, I forget his name. It is, his name is Matteo Sara. Do you remember Roxanne? He came to your house along with Harry and he was doing a short documentary. A um, couple of things on Instagram that I've shared as well. He's um, looking to launch his documentary, isn't he? he he's trying to finalise it. I've just sent you the link, Roxanne. If you open it up and maybe you could copy the link and post it into the chat if it, it, okay. uh, I see that you had a spanner there yep. um yeah he, so he's just trying to finalize his uh, short documentary and um what's it I think a, a lot of it is um with Harry um it's it, the documentary is called um are your thoughts your own 
Um, and he's a nice chap. Um, it, you know, we met him as they stayed the night with us at uh, Roxanne's. Um, and he's got, uh, he's, he's not necessarily a flat earther, but he's, um, he's kind of on the fence. That, that, I think that's, would you say that was right, Roxanne, would you? Yeah. yeah. Kind that's of on the fence. Place. That's a good place. Yeah. yeah, he's going through the, pro he's, he's definitely on some kind of pursuit of truth. Um, from Sardinia, I think. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I mean, I watched the the small part of the trailer, and that, and I'm, I'm quite excited. Now, I, you know, I, I think it will be a pretty interesting documentary. So I really want to, um, uh, you know, uh, myself, I will be back in him. But it'd be nice if um, people come back and to finish that off. You know, he's 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 after a little help, you know, like um, funding wise. Uh, so hopefully there'll be a link in the chat soon, and, and maybe you can, uh, in the chat. It's in the Brilliant, now. yeah. That's all I wanted to say. I yield the floor. <laughs> Jason, did you say he would be tomorrow in Glastonbury? No. Say that again? Will he be at Glastonbury tomorrow? No, 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 not no, not Matteo, no. No, but but me and you are, aren't we? And we're gonna eat all of that good food that um, Lisa is posting on, on her little her Facebook. Yeah, that's right. Uh, Lisa has been, um, is it all vegan food, I imagine, isn't it? Um, she's been putting yeah. lots of food together and she's been, yeah. she's been filming it and posting all this, this amazing food that she's putting together for the uh, for the meetup. Yes, mostly vegan. <clears throat> so, Jason, are you local to Glastonbury? How come you're, you're going to be there, are you? Yeah, yeah. Well, I was going to go to, um, uh, what's it, the John uh, D experiment, um, and then, but there happens to be the two things happening on the same day, and it's it's a little bit far from one to the other, and so I, I just made a choice and thought I'll go to the sh the, the quickest one. Um, so there's because there's an awful lot of people going to the John D experiment, so I figured that well let them carry on with that and then i'll go over and support um lisa and i'll pop into glastonbury uh, it's about um an hour and a half drive from me so yeah, I'd be, I'd yeah look i'm looking uh, looking forward to the john d experiment and more info on that um when he's when he joins us again but um yeah no good stuff and um is, is robin going to the glastonbury event because as far as i know robin's around bristol somewhere yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure Robin's going to be able to get to any of the events tomorrow um, in person. So that's unfortunate. But, you know, we've all got, as you all know, we've, it, it's really difficult to try and have that kind of balance. You know, a lot of us want to take in, in part in so many things and there's only so many things that we can do and take part in. So I'm not sure Robin's going to be able to come. But me and and Ro me Roxanne, are you, um, you're planning to meet up with John D tomorrow, aren't you, on the South yeah. Coast? Is that the reason for the gathering in, in your pad? Well, ish. It's definitely the reason for Dave being here, because Dave's coming down to Brighton as well. Mine is completely accident. Yeah. Me and Nora, Nora's in town for a couple of days. So yeah. She said, you want to link up for coffee? And I was like, I'm going to be in the house waiting for Dave to arrive. So if you want to come over for coffee, come over here for coffee. Um, and then she bought matcha green tea and didn't slightly drink any coffee. I tried to give everybody matcha tea. That's why I'm here. <laughs> Doesn't look like coffee. Yeah, so well, um, hi, hi to Dave and uh, Nora. Welcome. It was uh, it tasted, it tasted like warm water. But the reason why I've come down is, like I say, I've brought quite a bit of equipment down. But also, I'm down to learn as well because this is an area where I, I need, need, to, need to get to know a little bit more about. Oh, tell us about your equipment for the us geeks. Tell us about your equipment. Well, I've only brought my camera down, the uh, Nikon Cupix uh, B700, uh, brought the tripod, I've brought my gizmo little thing down, you know, the gimbal kind of thing for, for where you move around and all that, and just my compass really, and a few other things, not not a lot, just, just, just camera mainly. Nice. Uh, if, if you need an extra zoom camera, I've got an extra zoom camera. But the good news is, in three weeks time, I'm getting my camera converted to full spectrum, so it should be one hell of a camera. So uh, looking forward to that. Infrared. Infrared and ultraviolet. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'll drink to that. Ching, ching. Okay. Yeah, that'll be exciting. Yeah, infrared. Love it. Shout out to J. Tolan Media. Mm. I can't hear Adam. Sorry, right, get your filters out, Dave. I'm looking forward to that, mate. That'll be. So. I'm real curious about this observation that's going down, this peer to peer observation. Uh, I see Dr. Hello? D. There we go. Yeah, absolutely. Perfect. Oh, so much better. Excellent. 
Dr. John D., thank you for joining us here at the Iron Realm Media's Have No Sphere. Uh, welcome. Sorry for all the, the confusion and chaos. I'd like to say that it's not par for the course, but damn it, this is exactly how we do it every week. So welcome. No, that's fine. Thanks a lot. Cheers. Yeah. Yeah, it's good. So uh, yeah, yeah, it's been uh, it's been like cold yeah the past few days, and it's been snowing down here, but it seems to have uh, cleared up really well. It's quite warm, so it looks like it's just going to be a normal wintry you know, you know you know the weekend looks like it's just going to be like a normal south coast you know like winter that weekend, and uh, yeah, the weather's looking good actually. Yeah, bloody cold and wet and. Possibly oh, yeah, cold, yeah. <laughs> John, nice to meet you. John Savage here. Um, All right. Big fan. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but cold's a good thing because it, it means we won't have too much, like, refraction of light, you know. So, so, so the cold's normally good, like, you know, like, though it is cold, yeah. Absolutely. So, I was, I was, I was so, explaining yeah. to the wife tonight, uh, oh, we're going to have to get the John sorted out. We'll we'll have to go more formal titles, won't we? We'll go with Doctor John. Um, but I was explaining to my wife about how how bonus the crap weather was for the experiment. As as and I'm getting my disclaimer in here, mate. Um, I'm not sure whether I'm going to make it. It depends on what happens this evening. We've had a few bits of snow, but I'm hoping to make it and uh, shake hands with you tomorrow, pal. So good evening. It's it's uh, it's Adam here, John. Yeah, just yeah, just just. So just say I'm not sure whether we will meet because I will, I, um, you know. So I will be at Worthing. I'm not sure whether you're going to be at Brighton or Worthing. Not sure whether we will meet like afterwards. Hopefully, we will all, all meet up afterwards. So uh, yeah, not sure. So I'll tell you what, bro. <laughs> if I get down to Brighton, it, Worthing won't be the getting to Worthing won't be an issue. So don't worry. But no, no. I, I've heard there's a party at Roxanne's. Afterwards, anyway. So, if you do make it, oh, right. oh, good, good. Yeah. <laughs> there's, always a party. there's always a party at my house, right? <laughs> Cheers, Mrs. Chester. <laughs> Mine is watered down. Can I just ask, John, for those who have been living under a rock recently, um, what what it is you're bringing to the to the table i mean you're exceptionally well qualified in spectroscopy there you go got it right yeah, <laughs> nice. yeah, yeah which doesn't mean much but yeah but could you just confirm for the naysayers out there and the and the dullards i get on my twitter feed that um you, you do have uh, a phd in spectroscopy is that right <laughs> Yeah, yes, I do, though it doesn't really mean much yet, you know what I mean? Sure. We are all scientists. We are, we are, you know, all, you know, like explorers that ask like questions and that's what you need to be. Yeah. I mean, you know, just because I've had, had a bit more like experience than most in, in like some things. Oh, uh, bollocks, know, like, pal. Now that's, that's nonsense, isn't it? Hey, a doctorate in something doesn't mean you know everything about everything. But it means you're a freaking expert in certain things. Well, it and means that, to me, it, it means to me, you you know that you don't know lots of things. <laughs> yeah. that, that's what it means. <laughs> Good answer. That's and, the and, beauty of true knowledge, isn't it? Yeah, we're lost. <laughs> and John, are you are you working in the field of your PhD at the moment? I mean, or I, 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 did did the did it um, flourish into a, a job or whatever? I mean, I, I've got a degree, but I did nothing to do with my degree after I got it. It was just four years of good fun. Yeah. Um, it means that yeah, you have to work for a living. No, I mean, are you flipping burgers or are you actually using your PhD at the moment? I'm not using my, my PhD um, directly, but I am working in I mean, the science field so Sweet. yeah yeah so, cool. it's, it's, so i'm not you know like directly using it but like what i've learned from it you know you know that's being used Brilliant. so wow. and and of course this is what and it, and it was you know my background which which inspired me to get into you know like these lasers and you know mm. uh, you know in these sightings so it was it was actually me trying 
to you know i watched a few I, I, like a few youtube videos and i was like oh that's complete nonsense and i'm like i'm you know you know and i'm not going to have have people you know like making like science look stupid so of course i went out my way to try and prove prove it wrong i couldn't prove it wrong so uh, as a real scientist does yeah that's that's exactly what um we're all meant to do but i think that's uh yeah i think that's awesome that you're i mean and and for that reason it's understandable that you want to remain semi-anonymous i mean obviously i, I presume your identity is blown tomorrow uh, no oh gosh i'm definitely not blown yet tomorrow oh i think something's <laughs> happening over in roxanne's everybody's saying hi to hori hori showed up Ah, oh, Hori, there we go. <laughs> How's it going, everybody? Nice to All nice right. to be here. Thanks for having me, Iron Realm. Hi, Roxanne, <laughs> Nora, Dave, <laughs> man. Oh, uh, what's up, Hori? Welcome nice. to the show, my friend. Glad to have you. Ah, uh, hi, hi, hi. It's a, it's a great uh, day out here in space. Very warm up here, actually. Today. <laughs> it's good to be here. Good to be here. Awesome. Thanks. We were just talking to uh. Dr. John and just getting caught up with him. Didn't mean to interrupt, didn't mean to. Yeah, don't let me interrupt, I'm listening. I was, just before we do get caught into it, John, Dr. John, can you give us a quick outline of the plans for tomorrow? I know the weather's sounding okay, but what are your yeah, plans? Yeah, that, and... The outline is really simple. We're gonna, we're, <laughs> we're gonna point some lasers and we will see if we can see them. Uh, like, like I know, it's just beautifully simple. They will be start with one meter above the tide level. Yeah, the cameras on each side will be one meter above tide level, and we're just going to see what we see. And please tell me somewhere along the side you'll have somebody reviewing this next to the pier. But in uh, peer review. <laughs> However, nice. well, that's not a bad. That's not a bad thing to say. As it, you know, uh, I, mean, I love the play on words on the peer to peer. And I, how many times have we been bugged for our peer reviewed information here in the community? So, but I my could, question was to to John was whether I mean you you're going from Brighton to Worthing or Worthing to Brighton. Is there someone halfway between the two on the coast that? might be able to see what's going on on both sides just to show that for those that claim there's a curve that it out of or out of is it author author something or other view that um you're not seeing the curve sort of thing does that make any um, sense? no yes 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 no we don't have have someone we could have someone at shoreham but i don't want to send someone there because because they'd be bored. Yeah, if you see yeah, what I mean. They were. But but we are planning yeah to do a much longer one where we will have someone halfway. So but but then they'd have to spot like the laser beam. You know, yeah, I'm I don't not know sure what, how you do that. I don't, I don't know how you do that, but that's um definitely worth thinking about. I, it would be the the soundly view, the the non soundly view or something from the side to show that, uh, you know, for anyone claiming there is curvature, um, that you would see that from the side as well. But um, right. kind of like with the, the bridge in New Orleans with the, yes. pier, I mean, the side to side view we did on the, what was it? The pan and scan camera. I don't remember the name of the site now, but yeah, showing from side to side, there's no damn curve on that ramped up bridge. Sadly. That's right. That's right. Giga pan. Well, was the name. Well, yes. the um, yeah. That's it. well, yeah, the measurements we take will will be a big a big like indicator about about um you know like refraction taking place. So we're going to be taking I mean the temperature at sea level fifth fifth um like fifty centimeters above one meter one meter fifty and like two meters at both ends. And we're going to be taking the yeah, temperature and the uh, relative humidity, and that will be an indicator of of a a, a like grade. So you know, so like a density yeah. grading. Yeah, through, so, through the whole thing. Have what? Have you got any updates on any ballers that are turning up? 
Yeah, I've I've just launched a video on YouTube right I now. It. I didn't have a chance to see it though, but uh, yeah, yes. fill us and, in. And I've and you know and I and it was just uh you know here's here's um you know here's 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 a report you know you know like the weather's looking good, we've got these people who will be coming down, and unfortunately we've had no one who would who would claim themselves to be a globe supporter has yet like volunteered, you know, to like, come down or like send a representative. But you know, there's still time, and I'm hoping someone will come down because you know, you know, from the start of this, you know, we've wanted it to be totally like transparent and available to you know all people. So That's right. I'm hoping someone will come down. That's right. You put the invitation out there to as many sort of prevalent ballers as you could find including mick west although i completely understand why that invitation was withdrawn um but isn't that doesn't that speak volumes that you're having a, sci a scientific experiment no yeah you're having an yeah, observation, observation. <laughs> that anyone can watch that anyone can take part in um and uh, you know all these diehard ballers you, you would think um this would be their moment of gloat, you know, their Bedford level um, fraud moment of, of gloating, but no take up whatsoever. And certainly they're not arranging any sort of similar observations themselves. So, I mean, it just speaks volumes, doesn't it? Like, I don't know why people that claim certain things don't want to come and do some science or, you know, or, or like a simple, you know, you know, you know, just a simple test, a simple like observation. You don't have to get wet. You can bring bring your own, you know, laser, your equipment, you know, like your camera. It will all be recorded. We will all be there, totally transparent, live stream straight onto YouTube. That's it. I mean, even it, it, even if they wanted to come down and, you know, to 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 make sure you weren't cheating, to make sure you know to you would think that they would want to be there just to make sure the the whole thing was legit or to point out where you where your flaws are or whatever but nothing it's um a very sort of couch attitude that ballers have which is why they're ballers of course yeah and i want people to come down and just do you, you know and do like the experiment you know like for themselves there will be spare you know spare lasers down there you know, you know, you know, like it's all there and you just need, you know, your phone, like camera, that is all you need. So, yeah. So I'm just, yes, I am, I am, you know, shocked slightly that, you know, people that talk about, you know, all this like science don't want to get involved and I don't understand why not. Well, here's a shout out to all the ballers out there or the FE curious or anything else. Um, Get yourselves down there, Worthing and Brighton tomorrow. What time? Uh, we're going to start roughly around three o'clock. So we're going to start in the light, um, and hopefully, yeah, the weather will be good, and we will see the, you know, and we we will see the laser beams in the light, and then it will gradually start to go dark, and then hopefully we we will get some nice dark like pictures of the laser beams as well. So yeah, sounds brilliant. I can't and wait then, for the results. And then once we've done that one and, you know, we, and hopefully we can get more people involved, we will take, you know, the beams further and further and further. So, uh, uh, and a few of us are talking about going, going, you know, from France, you know, right. France right. all the way across, you know, to, you know, to Dover. So, you know, so we're thinking about, you know, you know, peer to peer, and then, and then, you know, like from one country, like to another country. Absolutely. Well, so, you're a man after my own heart because I've been, I mean, when I first heard about Flat Earth, I, I thought I've got to test this. I've got to find out if this is true. And being sort of near the South Coast, I, I went down to uh, Lyme Regis um, to see if I could see the Isle of Portland, which juts out from the South Coast at Weymouth. Yeah. And to my astonishment it was it, it wasn't just a uh, difficult to see it was it was it was on the horizon this massive 
Ireland was on the horizon. I had to go and ask the ice cream salesman on there. I was like, what is that? He said, it's the Isle of Portland. I was like, you're joking, aren't you? So I gave him some spiel about eight inches per mile squared and how we shouldn't be able to see it. And he was saying, well, we can see the, we can see Portland build the lighthouse, which is, I think it's 11 meters above sea level on the very end of, of um, the Isle of Portland. Uh, we see that regularly at Seton. And then um, I'd heard that you can go all the way down to, I can't remember where it was, near Paynton somewhere. Um, and you could see it, that there were claims, even in the, the tourist guides, there were claims that you could see um, the Isle of Portland from this location in uh, probably Devon. And it was 50, 50 miles away. So, I mean, uh, I was I was staggered. I, I saw it from Lyme Regis. Then I went to Seton, which was 30 miles away. Um, and I'm yet to go to the 50-mile mark. But, yeah, a man after my own heart, absolutely. Yeah, th this is the really strange thing. You know, you know, like me, you know, you know, so I've lived along, you know, like the South Coast virtually my whole life. And I have always just taken it for granted seeing right down the other coast. And it was only when you do yet yeah, a calculation where you're like, oh, that's weird. Like, I shouldn't be able to see that, yeah, according to the calculation. But I've seen that, you know, like most of my life. And then you start to investigate. So, Dr. John, when did you first become aware this conversation was even happening about this shape of the earth? Um, oh, gosh, it must have been just just over about a year and a half ago and it was just purely by by chance you know you, you know my phd's are on light so i was looking into you know like youtube about light and lasers and of course there was a video on the right hand side about someone shining like lasers you know as, you know so i looked at the video and i thought wow that's a fake you can't shine a laser that far and see that far and then i watched a few more videos and thought wow they're either faking that really well yeah but why yeah but why would they why would they go to all that trouble to fake a video and then i thought okay i have to try that for myself because i just don't believe them and that was about a year and a half ago i started well kudos to you and uh, and it was just, you know, like just by chance that, you know, you're on the right hand side, you know, you know, like on YouTube. So I was looking for, I like for videos on lasers and there was this, you know, shining laser, you know, you know, like I think it was across a frozen lake. And I just sort of like looked into it. I thought, oh, they're such liars. I have to prove them wrong. <laughs> wrong. And, you know, you know, yeah, yeah, and I can't prove them wrong. Would that be the uh, FE Core Lake Balaton? No, it was it was it it was two guys on a oh, frozen one, yeah. lake. One one had a kind of like snowmobile Skiddy. thing. Remember that one? And it was yes, uh, yes, it, it thing. It was a least. Canadian lake, I think, yeah. wasn't it? It was over yeah. seven something miles or something, and the guy literally had it on the ground, and he was he was picking it up the other the other side, yeah. John, I approached it probably in a similar way, arrogantly, academically. I smashed this one. Um, and it's that pesky cumulative effect of curvature that ruins everything um, for me. And it's not, and it's the one thing that you're not taught to consider. And certainly your field is more applicable to it. So I, that's the kind of question I had for you tonight is, that cumulative curvature, was that ever discussed? No, no. No, I mean, in, in school, it's, it's just not discussed, really, really, is it? You know, like nothing's yet discussed. And it was for me, it's when you sit down and you start to, oh, I'll, I'll, I'll attack this and I'll do this and I'll do the maths on it and... That'll disprove, and it's that it's that compounding effect. Once you get to twenty miles, um, and anything that really it becomes, it starts to become ridiculous as you go from even from ten, 
you know, as you go from one mile to the next, the compounding effect of the curvature really does start to smash the ball. Um, oh, oh yes, think, yes. Yeah, what, yeah, because I see what you mean. Yeah, yeah. Luckily, again, living along yeah, the south coast from, you know, you know, being 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 like close to Worthing, you've got like Brighton with all of its beautiful like landmarks, you know, like the I three sixty Shoreham, you know, you know, the Shoreham station, you know, like the power station one hundred meters high. You've got the I three sixty like just along, then you've got Brighton's cranes. So you can yes, yeah, so you can clearly see, you can look all the way along and you can still see it all. So would you describe yourself as um, a, a ball earth sceptic rather than a, a flat earther at this point because of the limitations on being able to say definitively it's flat and stationary? It's, um, I mean, have you done any experiments with the stationary moving side of, um, side of things? Oh gosh, no. Oh gosh, no, you know, like not at all. It's taken me what? Yeah, I mean, it's taken a, you know just over a year now to um, repeat your like, observations. If you see what I mean. So the observations I took last, you know, last um, last spring, say, I can then take this spring again to see, you know, just to see, you know. Right. You know, yeah. like whether we're seeing the same thing, you know, like again. Yeah. So like this winter now, I'm seeing much, you know, you know, much the same things which I saw last winter. Virtually no, like no refraction, like taking place most nights. So yes. Yeah. So yeah. You're, you're you know. building up an annual sort of um, sort of record of of um, observations in that area. That's that's. I can understand that. I mean, this is a, a lifetime's work of for anyone. Um, you know, to be able to cover several aspects of it is um, <laughs> yeah. properly. Yeah. I mean, properly. I mean, I, I've, I've dabbled in the gyroscopes um, side of things, but I wouldn't by any means say that I've properly documented it, which is what you are meticulously doing here which is exactly what's needed really do you plan on writing a paper or anything along those lines uh, nothing the... planned yet oh. yeah like nothing planned yet i you know i still know i've got a lot more to learn i've got a lot more like you know of the observations to do i'm kind of like you know i've like almost done it for a year now so i'm waiting to get that you know th those those like secondary you know, times in to watch, you know, you know, I want to wait, you know, again for the summer, like holidays to see if I see the same things that I saw last, last like summer. Mm. Yeah, so, well, so I now want to start making vague, 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 um, you know, you know, like predictions and, and then to go out there and make those observations and see if they start to match my predictions. If you yeah. see what I mean, like no, say, right, right, like last like summer, you know, like when I was observing Brighton, I saw this much, this much, you know, like refraction taking place, the upward yeah, refraction. So, so am I going to see the same thing again, like this, like summer? So, you know, and then and and then if I do, I'm going to feel more like confident in like, what I know. And like, what I also want to do is get more YouTube videos out there. Of, of just the facts of, you know, like refraction, showing people my photographs. At, and I just, I'm just like telling them, you know, like what this means. Yeah. Because I think, I think what gets me is that, uh, you know, people will probably look on the internet for like information, but it's so like scattered around that they can't get the information in a nice like format that makes sense. So when someone like Mick West says refraction, they're not quite sure what he means. So I'm, so I'm trying to get, you know, so I'm trying to form this, this like, you know, th these YouTube like videos that people can then like go to and go, okay, like this, you know, you know, this is what, you know, you know like downward like refraction is. This is what, you know, like the upward, you know, like refraction is. Yeah. So I want to do that. So people, 
that can be, you know, like bombasted by people like Mick West can actually have somewhere to go to and go, well, hold on a second, Mick West. You know, let's, mm. you know, like, let's talk about this like properly. Let's talk about, you know, you know, the real like science yeah, behind this. Well, this is, of course, what the Mick Wests of the world rely on, isn't it? Is bamboozling their yes. audience with um, big words and making it sound like they know what they're talking about. With yes. a nice that's, that's, that's what background. I enjoyed, John, with, with Dr. John's vids, is that the science was put there and, you know, to the title in an authoritative way. Uh, it was funny to watch it become unchallenged. Um, but it was nice to have it put there clearly and concisely to prove, and, and, and you put it politely, Dr. John, yeah, uh, how Mick West is putting over his opinion. Um, but for me, you quite concisely and um, eloquently describe how the portrayal of what Mr. Mick West is suggesting occur is fanciful. Uh, it would be the way I would describe it, and wholly inappropriate um, and two-dimensional. Oh gosh, it's like it's just complete nonsense. It is. It is just sad, sad. Yeah, complete nonsense, and it's an embarrassment, you know, to science. You know, you know, here's me being a scientist, and it's like, you know, and I'm sorry, but it's an embarrassment. It's an absolute embarrassment, and it makes us look bad. You know, even to like the general public, you know, he's 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 saying I'm using this this like two D like model, which I've made up, uh, just like made up yeah myself. I mean, how does that make like scientists look? But we know he he can't say that he didn't make it up, but it's actually Snell's law, but because that would land him in a whole heap of trouble, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yes, 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 yeah. Can you explain to, to those listening why that would land him in a heap of trouble? It, it's to do with two different mediums, isn't it? Like yeah, yeah. Snell's law is is like based on, you know, you know, like these experiments done within the lab where you've got a glass block, a nice, well-defined glass block, and you shine in some light, you know, like a laser light, so it passes through in you know, just the normal air and then passes into the laser block. So you've got these two like well-defined, you know, glass and air. And of course, when you, you know, and of course, like when you go outside, you know, the atmosphere, it, it's not behaving like that. It, you know, there's not this, this well-defined like a boundary between these two like mediums, you know, it's, you know, yeah, it's like, you know, there is crazy outside. It's it, it's moving. It you know you know like its density is changing. You know like temperatures are changing. It's like well, it's just moving about the whole time. So 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 yes, Snell's law is perfect within you know like you know within the lab environment when you've got these two like mediums with a clear like boundary. You know, but but once you go outside, you yeah you can't use Snell's law. Well, you. <laughs> You can use Snell's law because, you know, because in one way, it's the best thing we've got. Yeah, if you see what I mean. But you can't generalise yes, Snell's but, law. But, but you have to, you know, you know, as a true scientist, you'd have to tell people, you know, we are using Snell's law. We are basing it on the huge assumption that the, you know, that like the outside air will behave the same as a glass block, you know, which it won't, but it's, you know, yeah, but it's the best we've got. But if you don't tell people that, then, you know, you're being like devious. And that's the, the modicum of what we would call a, a scientific experiment um, that this is drawing from. And, and after Snell's law, you, you can then employ maths as much as you want to insinuate anything you want um which is what mick west is doing essentially it's giving the worst case scenario via snell's law but he won't actually admit that that's what the calculations he's using so can i ask just one work, question on that john just to summarize it just yeah. for john dr john to the seven over six r can you just give your 
opinion on its validity and its derivation? I mean, you know, the research I've done on, um, you know, on, um, on, you know, on um, people that you, you know, that, um, what, um, uh, people that um, survey the land, all the scientific, uh, you know, like papers I've read, it's so changeable and like deviating that it's just not like reliable at all it 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 depends upon the land you know like tarmac uh grass you know you know like you know like bare like soil that it's 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 yeah personally i'd say it's not really usable like again it comes with huge assumptions you know like time of day land and it has to be land not sea because no one seems to have done stuff you know you, you know, using yeah the sea, so R, R way, itself surely the, the way <laughs> the way I look at it is is even if it was in some way validated by a year's worth of atmospheric data, it's a bit like saying today will be hot, sunny, rainy, shiny. It's an average. It's a nonsense figure that doesn't apply ever to any particular day. Um, it isn't a bit like Zach with the Rayleigh criterion where it's in a, a perfect atmosphere. It's not a comparison to that where you've got a a, a gradual degeneration uh, in a linear or or, or in a a, a, a a proportional manner to the degeneration. You've just got this random figure that, as best, is generated on the average weather on the average day, but by its own definition, can never ever apply really to any situation you use it but also adam it's based on r Shh. so that's a pure assumption from from step one so that's, that's the bit you use after you've pulled its pants down <laughs> explain oh well, you first of all uh, you've got the assumption of r haven't you but what i'm trying to say here is there's an assumption of seven over six which is even more fanciful and actually requires the person, even if they do have the knowledge, to accept a presupposition of complete nonsense that can never apply to the situation you're using it in. Well said. I don't know if it's true. Dr. John. <laughs> John, do you listen to uh, Nathan Oakley 1980s channel and the Flat Earth debates and that sort of thing? Have we lost John? Uh, it does Ground look like control. To yes, Dr. John. It looks like he's dropped somehow. Yeah, shame. He Did went Dr. all John small like... with low bandwidth. But I, I want to know what music. Um, I want to know where Doctor John's gone, and I want to yeah. know what Har Horry is listening yeah, to. Yeah, what are you listening to, Horry? Horry's having a party out there. Yeah, it's like a party. <laughs> well, <laughs> should we should we wrap this bit up? Start the second half, and then see what what's oh, going down at Horry's. Are we coming? Uh, guys, are we coming? Are we there? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm just yeah, getting yeah. in the mood. Uh, I'm getting keeping myself pumped up for this. I'm excited to be here. Yeah. <laughs> we did yeah. get Dr. John back real quick. So hello, hello. Look, really uh, sorry about that. No, yeah, my no. battery went dead. Oh. <laughs> Perfectly fine. We were actually just time. getting ready to wrap up and take a little break so that way it's not one big huge video. Yeah. Cool. Uh so if you wanted to stick around, you're more than welcome, but I know it's pretty late where you are. But, yeah. Uh, yes. And if you could tell that Roxanne, please, yeah, to get to bed and stop drinking. She's got some, uh, yeah, she's got, she's got some. <laughs> it's really low alcoholic. It's like 5% free. And I've only had It's that. like Ribena. I've only showed that with your glasses and stuff. It's healthy. It's good for us already. Don't worry, I'm, I'm all organised. Me and Dave are organised. We're going to be on the train. We're going to be there a little bit early, have myself a little hot drink, get acclimatised to the weather, and I'll be there. I will be there. Wicked. Can I ask one more question, uh, John? Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, it, it can't go without noticing that you, you go by Dr. John D. Um, is that purely by chance, or is there some sort of 007... <laughs> 
Uh, I mean, are you trying to wind up the numerologists and the symbologists out there by by going by that that name or? Um, Why? What does that mean? Doctor John D, the um, yeah. famous alchemist astrologist, to the Royal Queen Elizabeth the First. That's right. Oh, right. Uh, who, okay. Who well, by... well, goodness me, I didn't even know that. All right. Okay. <laughs> so I'll take that as it was coincidental. Then. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. Okay, sure. no worries. Well, hopefully sure. that, that'll that put the symbologists and all the rest of it to bed. Uh, can I just finally just offer you all, all the best of luck tomorrow? And um, I hope to get you back on again for an update and some more talking. Oh, Cheers, bud. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Yes. Okay. Thanks a lot. Yes. Thank you, John. Awesome. He was one of the first intelligence agents, Dr. John D. He yes. was 007. Yeah. The original. Original Bond. And that's coincidence. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is purely coincidence, yeah. <laughs> I do love your work, John. Yeah, but... Uh, I'm looking forward to meeting you tomorrow as well. Yeah, yeah, my work is just point and click. That's you know, you know, you know, like that's all it is. There's nothing, you know, brilliant about it. It's just point and that's click. That's why I like it. That's why oh, I like good. it. Oh, good. Well, I do point and click. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Point and click is great. Right, Adam. Do you by chance have something ready? Do you have gravity pulled up? Since we've decided I can't play it on my end I'm anymore. So ready. I've just been clicking and flicking right now. So if you give me a second, say good night, I should be ready to go. Awesome. Well, Dr. So John, just, thank you so much for joining us. It was an absolute pleasure. We hope to have you back on soon. Yes, uh, thank thank you very much. Yeah, we will speak once uh yeah, I mean perhaps next week sometime, once we've processed all of those results, etc. Yeah. Excellent. That would be great. Fantastic. Thank you very much for your time. All right. Night night. See you tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. See you tomorrow. Have a great rest of your night. I do just want to give a quick shout out right here this Sunday. I think it's 3 p.m. Central. Sometimes it's kind of hit and misses to get an exact time, but on Globusters over on their channel, they're going to have Martin Liedke and UAP channel on. So I know Adam is going to be super excited to tune in and watch that. But they've also got Flat Earth Man, who's going to be debuting a brand new music video over there on Globusters. So make sure everybody goes over there and tunes in this Sunday. That is going to be an awesome show. I'm probably going to have to uh, make sure I tune in and stick around and actually watch that one. I'd like to pop into chat and say hello and chit chat every once in a while, but I don't always have a chance to actually sit down and pay attention to Globusters as much as I'd like. But I think with Martin Liedke and UAP on together, I think it's going to be a smashing show. Um, so well, shout out to Globusters as well. I, I lost my internet connection on, on Monday. Some British telecom engineer severed my line and the rest of the streaks line. And I was at a loss uh, to what to do. But luckily... I realized I downloaded Globusters from Sunday night. So I had a whole night, three and a half hours of, of Globusters and loved every minute of it. You guys are brilliant and I'm a fan and I don't care who takes the piss or not. <laughs> I will do later off air, you gushy sod. That's all right. I'm off air already, mate. <laughs> <laughs> it's only on your channel. <laughs> been off air for the last 45 minutes. <laughs> all right kill it kill it let's do it everybody thank you so much for tuning into this first half ish of have no sphere right here in iron rail media make sure you tune in every tuesday and friday mornings over on what is it tfrlive.com where you find zach walt and i hanging out early mornings 4 a.m to 6 a.m central here in the u.s or 10 a.m to noon greenwich meantime for all of our cousins across the pond uh, with that, Adam, you go ahead and press play, and we will see you all right back here in just a few short minutes.
Yeah, I don't think anybody's hearing that. It's all gone wrong. That was the one click. I told you no, it was. Nobody's hearing that. Guys. Now you see, that was the bit. See, it was sounding great for us in here. It was nice and booming in my headset. Did I get it to you guys? Oh, that's I heard it, it, and it was booming, and then suddenly it cut out completely. <laughs> and I thought you were doing the same thing when Josh does, where it's just oh. too loud and it's overdriving. Oh, the whole I was getting into that so hard. Too. Oh, it was great, wasn't it? I'll tell you what I'm going to do, guys. I'm going to cut the stream. I'm going to rewind. Yeah, I'm going to get the next stream lined up and let you chill to a bit of gravity. Anybody else, just go type in Vagabond Gravity. Come straight up. <laughs> Good night, everyone. We'll see you in about 10 five minutes. kind of night here on the realm. <laughs>